Benon Kavale suffers from bipolar affective disorder, a condition that is peppered with extreme mood swings, including hypermania and depression. But when he is well, he wears a grin on his face as he goes about his chores. In 2005, Kavale was admitted at Butavika National Referral Hospital. I was restrained to be sedated and after sedation I was dragged into a Sahurujian room which is a solitary confinement within the mental health facilities and uh, perceived to handle patients who may portray uh, inappropriate behaviors, aggressiveness or violence. But you may find that uh, in my case I was first of all sedated which means I was the violence was no longer there, so it will not call for seclusion. To deal with his volatile situation, he was stripped and shackled in a seclusion room measuring two square meters where he coiled himself on a concrete slab. A patient is placed into a solitary confinement, is not provided with the food, is not provided with the water, there is no blanket, there are no beddings. And uh, it's like uh, there are no sanitary facilities, no urino, no toilet, but you have to bear harsh conditions as a patient or someone who is suffering. And that's what I went through. And it not only occur on one occasion, but still when I had another episode in 2010, still the same thing happened to me. Butabika Hospital, which is run on a shoestring budget, has a bed capacity of 550, but the member patients is over 900 in a country with only 40 psychiatrist doctors, serving a population of 40 million. In 2015, Kabale, alongside the Center for Health, Human Rights and Development, a non-profit organization which champions the right to health, sued the Attorney General on behalf of Butabika National Referral Hospital. In the plaint, Kabale, amongst others, sought a declaration that the lack of a toilet and other sanitation facilities in the seclusion rooms in Butabika National Referral Hospital is a violation of the freedom from cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment under Articles 24 and 44 of the Constitution. He also sought a declaration that affirms that locked patients kept in dark seclusion rooms without any audio and visual interaction with any person is punitively unjust deprivation of personal liberty and is cruel. His lawyers argued that it also violated the right to personal liberty under Article 23 of the Constitution and the right to freedom from torture under Section 3 of the Prevention of Torture Act No. 3 of 2012. In his defense, the Attorney General argued that seclusion rooms are a last resort and a temporary holding place for volatile and severely ill patients who might harm others. The rooms are located close to sanitary facilities which can be used by patients when staff occasionally check on them, argued the Attorney General. In his argument, Court found that the plaintiff did not prove on a balance of probabilities that Kavale was kept in seclusion for 24 hours without medical attention and without sanitation facilities. The judge also found that seclusion pass is not a violation of patient rights. I do not think, I do not think that the discretion of the medical doctor should be overridden by a court order. The medical doctors at the mental treatment hospital should be able to make the judgment on what is the most appropriate form of treatment that will help recover the patient, read the judgment delivered by High Court Judge Stephen Musota. Kabale has appealed this decision in the Court of Appeal, which is yet to commence the hearing. Beyond the courts of law precincts, Kabale's bold act renews the debate on the stigma and intrusive nature of administering treatment on mental health patients. It has also set the stage for a combustible debate between critics on the use of seclusion and electroconvulsive therapy ECT against those who believe that these methods are within the ambit of the medical necessity doctrine. Uh, there is uh, well-documented information 
uh, about uh, the use of both uh, ECT and seclusion. And uh, this uh, uh, research uh, shows that uh, uh, they are actually short and long term uh, memory dysfunction as a result of use of uh, ECT, for instance. Uh, so the cost-benefit analysis for the use of electroconvulsive therapy or ECT is actually poor uh, because uh, uh, it does not uh, uh, provide uh, ethical uh, and, uh, and therapeutic evidence. Say for example, uh, losing a patient or a relative in a hospital and fearing to ever come to hospital. Shall we close hospitals because of that? Mm? So we have to be careful what we mean by these things. Mm? Uh, I've been very careful in saying that we have limited resources. I know I've seen to intensive care units or seclusion rooms mm? whereby doors autom open automatically, whereby toilets flush automatically. There's no need to handle anything. Okay, so you can't injure yourself. Okay, I've, uh, I've, I've known of places uh, whereby showers turn on automatically. So you don't have to have showers there where somebody can hang themselves. Now, if we don't have such facilities in this country. What shall we do? We've heard that some people, uh, there have been incidents of people dying, but they don't get that much publicity. So we, we think side seclusion. Um, during the mental health bill, you know, when we gave our views on the mental health bill, things like uh, seclusion and uh, electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, were, were talked about a lot. However, sometimes uh, uh, perhaps the medical, the most senior medical people, the psychiatrists, uh, could have other views, but uh, patients think that... Uh, Seclusion has to be to be reviewed so that patients don't 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 have to face traumatic experiences. But still, we see that things like ECT can lead to um, a violation of the freedom from torture, cruel and inhumane what treatment. Because if you look at the way it's done, um, the um, the way people feel after the process, the procedure has been done. From the people I've actually interacted with, it's not a nice experience. I've seen people cry, mothers forgetting their children after the, that entire process. Say for example, uh, losing a patient or a relative in a hospital and fearing to ever come to hospital. Shall we close hospitals because of that? Mm? So we have to be careful what we mean by these things. Mm? Uh, I've been very careful in saying that we have limited resources. I know I've seen to intensive care units or seclusion rooms mm? whereby doors autom open automatically, whereby toilets flush automatically. There's no need to handle anything, okay? So you can't injure yourself, okay? I've, uh, I've, I've known of places uh, whereby showers turn on automatically. So you don't have to have showers there where somebody can hang themselves. Now, if we don't have such facilities in this country. What shall we do? When I uh, had to be admitted, and uh, my doctor told me it was psychosis. Psychosis is when you have really suffered trauma. Yes, I was put in a place, it was a private room, but really it was in Mulago Hospital, because Mulago Hospital has the mental health unit. That's where I was admitted. And uh, with that place, I, have, I had all the facilities. I had a proper bed. So it's not really like I was secluded per se, but I needed also privacy because I was a new mother. I, at that time, I had a baby who was four months old. So from that experience, really, the, um, I can say I wasn't treated badly.
ECT is a procedure done under general anesthesia in which small electric currents are passed through the brain intentionally, triggering a brief seizure and causes changes in brain chemistry that can quickly reverse symptoms of certain mental health conditions. Uh, it, it's not worth it. But there are also other physical symptoms. Uh, a lot of physical health is affected. It can create a lot of weakness. Uh, I have also seen uh, patients uh, that have broken teeth as a result of uh, the use of electroconvulsive therapy. Uh, I, I remember three years ago I met a mother who had uh, been treated with ECT and uh, she was telling me that she could not even remember her children uh, in the process. So, I mean, this is where the, the human rights perspective then comes into play. Whoever speaks about these things should be able to quote to us controlled studies that they have in peer-reviewed journals, of which I read every day, and which I'm sure other doctors, and especially those who specialize, specialize in psychiatry, read every day, they're informed. We are in a world of information, not of hearsay. And that's very important to know. There are indications for electroconvulsive therapy, the mechanisms of how to give it. Like any medical procedure, it has to be given for specific indications by trained people in a measured way. And the results seen. Uh, it's a very effective treatment. I have used it. Many people have used it. And they still do, all over the whole world. So if you are treating me just to have that temporary, uh, uh, temporary um, ease uh, by trying to erase my, my memory uh, or thoughts that are actually that are likely to cause the suicidal tendencies and then uh, eventually have a, a long term memory dysfunction then uh, it, it's not worth it but there are also other physical symptoms I don't know of any drug any medication which doesn't have a side effect. I've known somebody who suffered what called the perforation of the intestine after taking two aspirins and they died. You cannot ban the use of aspirins because of that side effect. So yes, ECT may have some side effects. Fortunately, the ECT we give under anesthesia today will not cause you reversible, irreversible side effects. No one is going to suffer broken bones. Memory loss is temporary. Uh, there's no permanent brain damage. Um, the people definitely have interacted with many people as an, in my journey as an activist. And uh, <clears throat> most of the people, they suffer temporal memory loss. But then there are others because ECT has been, at least in Uganda, they've been administering it without using anesthesia. And that is a big challenge. So some people say they would bite their tongues, you know, stuff like that. So those are some of the side effects. However, there are also some people who have said that's what works for them. Yeah, because there are some people, uh, even as other people are against the method, there are some people who will say, they walk into the doctor's place, the psychiatric doctor, and tell him, this is what I want, this is what works for me. UN report sheds light on often undetected forms of abusive practices that occur under the auspices of healthcare policies and emphasizes how certain treatments run afoul of the prohibition on torture and ill treatment. It identifies the scope of state obligations to regulate, control, and supervise health care practices with a view to preventing mistreatment under any pretext. In a paper authored by Professor Ben Tunomugisha in collaboration with the Network of Public Interest Lawyers titled A Health and Human Rights Critic of Mental Health Act 2019. He argues that the law should expressively provide that electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, should only be administered in modified form, that is, with the use of anesthesia and muscle relaxants after obtaining informed consent of the patient. 
the Mental Health Act should make it clear that special treatments should be used as procedures of last resort when all other methods of preventing harm to self and others have failed. The Mental Health Act should prohibit the use of seclusion and restraints as forms of punishment or convenience of staff. It should also prohibit the chaining of a person with mental illness in any manner or form whatsoever, opines Trinomigisha, who is among us the most accomplished legal scholars on health and the law in the country. Trinomigisha is also calling for the prohibition of ECT for minors, except when the informed consent of a parent or a guardian. It should clearly state that ECT shall not be given to children under 12 years of age. Giving ECT treatments thus should be left to trained doctors, just like other medical or surgical procedures are left to properly trained doctors. The Mental Health Act, which came into force on 9th September 2019, repealed the Mental Treatment Act CAP 279 and the Administration of Estates of Persons of Unsound Mind Act CAP 155. Tunom says that compared to the repealed Mental Treatment Act and other mental health laws in the region, the MHA is a progressive legislation that significantly improves Uganda's mental health system. Derek Chiza, who is the Executive Director of Mental Health Uganda, told NTV that seclusion is widespread in Uganda. Uh, up country, uh, relatives can also put a patient in the side room if they are going to the market to buy something or they are going to see someone. So you could see, yeah, or, 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 even, or even just uh, keep them in some form of confinement. So uh, you, you can have seclusion in, in the health facility, but you, also, you can also seclude inside a home. So relatives can, also relatives can actually seclude inside a hospital because then uh, they want to go somewhere and then the patient has been a little bit agitated, a little bit violent and then they have to, and then they put the person into uh, a seclusion room. At the peak of the nodding syndrome, a strange epileptic disease which battered northern Uganda, parents often tied their afflicted children to trees, psychiatric care units. He argues, Barbara Lamara, who works with NetBill, says that many patients prefer community rehabilitation and more resources should be provided in sensitizing the community to enable people to coexist with those with mental illness. Of mental health patients is also a breach of their what? human rights because uh, a person cannot stay in a facility forever. We should be considerate of their normal lives. Someone has to be able to live their day-to-day -day lives like any other person when the let me say go to work, go to school, and institutionalization limits that liberty that they could have and enjoy as which is a right that is inherent to them by the fact that they are individuals and human beings. Support the one who has been mentally afflicted and to tell them that indeed these are treatable. Now there are many misunderstandings about the causes of mental illness. Some think they are curses, others that this is witchcraft, others that these are devil air, clan illnesses. All of these things are because of ignorance. The brain gets sick like any other part of the body. It should be studied and treated accordingly. I think it's important to get mental health out of the hospital and then and then take it to the community because uh, we have a lot of overcrowding, congestion in Butabika. Segane says literacy needs to be improved in communities to fight the stigma amongst mental health patients. Music